What's the biggest change during the last 50 years? The biggest trend? <coughs> biggest change? Any offers after the internet? Recycling. Recycling? Good. <laughs> Technology, isn't it? The thing is, the year at the moment is 2017, but human beings have been on the earth much more than 2,000 years, isn't it? We have been here at like 100,000 years. So it has taken a bit more than 100,000 years to achieve a population 3.5 billion people. So, and it happened somewhere middle of the 60s. Yes? What happened during the next 50 years? We doubled it. And all the trends are showing that 2050 there will be 9 billion people. 9 billion people who want the same things like we do, yes? The same roses, same cars, same beautiful houses, the same energy, same water, same food. The case is that the resources that we have today, it's not enough. Scientists have calculated that the red line for the nowadays uh, lifestyle is somewhere 3.5 billion people but there's a 7 billion so how we can handle it yes but we can't actually if we continue the same lifestyle what we have at the moment we take it all from the future generation all the oils all the food all the energy we take it just from the future generations <coughs> the, the current business model is really simple can you hear me like that? Yeah. You can? Yeah. You can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are video taping this. I can give you the voiceover after. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's it's a little bit uh, disturbing. Yes. Okay. Just give me a sign if you can't hear. Yes. If we take like a nowadays business model, and it's a linear, linear business model, it's really, really simple, yes? Sorry, economy model. It means that we take the resources from Earth, we make a lot of cheap products, a lot of cheap products, and a lot. Especially if you think about the China, we, take, we make a lot of, lot of cheap things. And the thing is, is that most of the things are really cheap ones. They don't last long, yes? So they are not really quality ones. So what happens, they have a really short life cycle, and after that, what we do, we throw them away. It's true? So try to imagine one thing, that, uh, that Earth can give only those resources that uh, are sustainably producing, that the Earth, Mother Earth can recover Yes, as I mentioned, the red line is somewhere 3.5 billion, yes? And if the Mother Earth can give us only those resources that she can recover, then the truth is that this year, on the 2nd of, sorry, the 3rd of the August, the stock had been empty, yes? And then we had to, ha, has, have to make the call to the God that you know, we need a oil, we need an energy, but the resources are out, yes. Can you give us like an extra earth? Yeah, it's not possible. So we take it from the future generations, as I said. So the solution is the circular economy. And the main idea of the circular economy is to find the ways how to feed these 7 or 9 billion people in a way with the resources what we have, yes? And it actually means the main word is design. We need to redesign everything what we have. It actually means if we start producing <coughs> something, we start thinking about the very end. We start to thinking what 
we can do with our products or what will happen with our products if they are out of their life cycle. Yes? How those things can be recycled? Which kind of materials we need to use to recycle those uh, products after the, the use? How they need to be constructed in a way that we can, after the life cycle, we can uh, recycle them, yes? And the million dollar question is also how we get this material back to, into our uh, production. So it all starts from the design. Simple, yes? We think what kind of materials we use, how it's uh, uh, constructed in a way that we can separate the things, yes? The biggest challenge of the recycling world today is that things are cheap and to, to, to decrease the price we need to mix together a lot of different materials. A simple example, you take like a glossy magazine, yes? Shiny pictures, you know? But how we achieve it? We take a paper and we will uh, put there a plastic, a paper with plastic, and you can't separate it. It's a beautiful picture, but the point of a uh, recycling view, it's pointless, yes? We just need to put it on the landfill or burn it. And there's a many, many things if you take like a packaging, what you buy from the shops, there's also mix it together, many different materials, plastics with the papers, metal with the plastics, and you just can't separate them. Yes, you can't recycle. So it's really important to think what kind of materials to use and how the product is uh, constructed. So, it's about the design. It's all about the design. Um, but the thing is, we can't go, go over just uh, with one day to the circular economy uh, system. It also means that we need to change the law system, we need to change the education system. Everything needs to be changed. So in the future, I definitely know there's uh, some decision makers, there's uh, some people here who make the laws in the future or they are doing it today. You need to think about, about the increasing of uh, waste and how we can recycle the waste. Any questions so far? No? Yeah. <laughs> so, It actually starts here, it starts from us, yes? How we behave. Um, Darwin says, for example, shorting out 90 different types of materials. We actually can short out like 120 different types of materials, even more. And there's no limits of recycling pure materials. But the main word is they need to be pure. Yes, homogeneous materials, and they need to be pure, like clean ones, not the dirty ones. Yes. So it's one of the challenges nowadays. Challenges. It's really easy to throw things together. Yes, and there, there's a legend that that uh, oh, the robot, robots are going to do it in the waste station. You can throw all the stuff together. It's not that way. Even if you take like a most high tech bio bow bio bow technology, yes, with the infrareds and everything, yes, you can separate it. Okay, you can separate uh, some of the stuff. And even if, if in the future you can separate all the stuff, now the question is who wants to re re reuse this material? You can imagine, yes, you would like. Packages together, and the, you, you uh, with bio waste, and there's some milk thrown on the on the bin, and then you will take some sand and everything. Yes, it's a beautiful company. Yes, now you can imagine. Okay, sorry for the words. Can you close it down for a second? 
Three? Oh, okay, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, my words, yes? But if the sheep goes into the sorting machine, then the sheep comes out, yes? Simple as that, yes? So you can't recycle. There's not any company who's ready to reuse or use the water to clean those dirty, dirty uh, household waste, yes? So to recycle the stuff, we need to make in the homes a simple shortage in homes, yes? Separate the packages, the glass, the paper. So that's the reason why we need to do it. Then we can make the after shortage in ramen cells. You just need to put the packages in, in one bag, basically. What we do, we separate those plastics in 35 different types. Yes? So there was a question that there should be a convenient system. It is the most convenient system. You don't need to separate packages like Japanese have to do it, like 42 different bins they have in the homes, yes? <laughs> it's just like one pack for the packages, one pack for the glass, one pack for the bio waste. As simple as that, isn't it? So about the challenges, more challenges what we have nowadays is that uh, there was a, uh, Anne was talking about uh, a company who said that they have a zero waste, yes? That they are burning. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, technically, they are right. And how bad does it sound? The law actually gives the right to call it recycling, yes? Energy production is a recycling thing, but it's not. Yeah. End of the day, it doesn't matter if we put it on the landfill. Okay, it's a bit better, but it's not the solution. And the solution is how to recycle the things as a material. So one thing, is what, why it happens all over Europe. Okay, Europe is a good example actually. Okay, we talk about the energy production, but most of the work, what they are doing with the waste, they just uh, throw it uh, into sea, yes? Europe is uh, making the energy. But the thing is, why it's that, that way is that uh, there's a lot of uh, incineration plants all over the, the Europe. The municipalities are, uh, have made their incineration plants all over the country. And it's a huge, huge investment. Crazy how much it costs, yes? So it's really hard to say to the people, so you need to short from, from day now, yes? And those investments, they basically will be empty <coughs> from, from the resource. So it's really, really hard question. At the, at everybody understands that we need to live in a green world, but in a set, uh, second that there's like a huge investment which not uh, allow that. And the second uh, thing, if we date like Estonia, I, I give you uh, a simple example from the Estonia, in Tallinn, for example. Uh, they made uh, their own municipality company, and the reason why they made the municipality company, the main message was that they want to decrease the prices of uh, household waste. And now the elections are coming, and they are talking that, okay, it should be totally free of charge. <laughs> Now you just can imagine what it's going to do with the, with the short if you get like a free of charge uh, waste collection, yes? You can throw everything together, you get rid of it free of charge, why you should short, yes? So, okay, I So. About the energy and the recycling, I give you a really simple example of the paper. Everybody knows that, yes? <clears throat> you can take a, take a paper and you can throw it away and we can burn it and we can like a piece of warmth from it. Or the, another way to do it is that we can actually take the printer paper, which the, always the best quality paper is from the new uh, raw materials. After that, we can recycle, we can make the trough, uh, drawing papers, 
you know, the texture is totally different. And you know the, the throwing papers? Yes, it's because it's made from the old printer papers. Then you can make the a newspaper and egg box and so on and so on. So you can keep a lot of, lot of life cycles. And that's the point of circular economy. If we take something from Earth, we keep them as long as possible in circle. But it actually means that we need to think already at the very beginning how our products will be reused. Okay, there were some uh, challenges, you know. Uh, yeah, Gerli and uh, Ayn was uh, talking about the, the fabrics. Yes, fabric is one of the challenges, definitely. There's not much uh, uh, ways to, to recycle it. <coughs> the tires, huge problem. Yes, we can make like several things from tires. Some rubber pieces. We can cover all the work with the rubber pieces and next year there will be a new tires. And it's an end, endless story, yes. Then there's a lot of waste, or we call it like a greenwash, that, that there's a lot of waste, which are actually the waste, but we renamed it. Yeah? We don't want to <coughs> call them some industrial waste, but we don't want to call it as a waste, even if they are toxics or, or some, some danger for the, for the nature. We don't want to call them as a waste. Yeah? Because ne next time it means that we will have some taxes on. So, what is waste? Yes, as uh, I already mentioned, there is some gray areas. What is actually the waste? And it's really fun that some of the industrial mountains, it's not the waste. And the some funny story that uh, if you have like a coach, okay, it's not a good example, but uh, but if the Ragan cell sky is, it, it, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. If the Ragan cell sky is coming and touching the coach, yeah, it's going to be a waste, yeah. But if comes some kind of uh, a shop or or who, how to call them? Uh, but the shops who, which are uh, targeted uh, for the hipsters, yes, if they are going to take this uh, coach, yes, it will be a valuable furniture for the hipsters, yes. Then it's not not uh, not vintage, yes. But if the Robinson sky is touching, it's waste. And if we want to, for example. To sell it or, or just to uh, give it free of charge, we need to uh, uh, get the certification mm -hmm. that it's not anymore the waste. It's a coach. Yeah. So it's a really fun story. Of course, there's the huge challenges in circular economy nowadays where with the resources, that there's the resources that uh, the question is, is there enough? Yeah. Especially if we take like a car industry, we have like a million uh, electric cars nowadays, but million, million electric cars in the world at the moment, yes. So you can just imagine how much cars there is in the world. Yeah. So, and we have uh, two uh, lithium uh, minings in the world. So, a huge problem is that uh, there are uh, many countries in most of the world. They have no no uh, recycling system at all. So that short is the story. The story president once said, but to lead us here won't bring us any further. Yeah. That's the truth. So if we want to live on this earth, we need to figure out how. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the bad.
But but again, like I'm just saying, like if not only in Estonia, worldwide, the, they are not really like separating this stuff. They are just putting into one single truck. Then it's like kind of something we are going on there because we pay for that. But uh, in the end, it seems to be just a, like a matter of obeying. Like you, you put your paper here, you put your household trash here. But in the end, if we watch the track coming, it just puts the whole thing in one single spot. So there, there's, and we pay for that. So that that's regarding on this uh, sorting thing, which is not really happening in such case. And, and of course, well, companies make money with that. Really interesting. So, sorry to. Sorry to. No, my, my question is. Uh, and people don't think about it. Mm -hmm. We're like, we're okay. just like, like zombies, just like going along. Mm -hmm. I can say it's the same thing in Germany. We have a lot of. <laughs> we have places with 40 uh, different containers. We have the possibility to divide the whole and compost. But if you see what's happened on the street, what's happened in McDonald's, what's happened in the hotels, you see that it doesn't work. I, I can uh, just, I can't comment. I just can't, can't comment. And I, I don't want to. Yes. yes. But the thing, if you take like a bio waste, yes? Mm -hmm. What we can do with the bio waste? What Robin says is doing with the bio waste, yes? First of all, we're going to generate, use it for the, for the gas production. Yes? And after that, you can make the soils. The, the, the thing is that uh, nobody actually wants those soils, but, but first of all, uh, you can uh, uh, make the energy from it, a valuable gas. And it's much more profitable than just put on the landfill. Yes? And that's the point of circular economy. Our mission in Robin Sales mission is to, to create a solution which bases on the circular economy, yes? And the, actually, the, the point of circular economy is that there's a really many new possibilities if you just redesign your, your uh, business. Maybe I can't, you know, uh, make you think differently. Maybe you want to end of your day believe that, you know, there's no point of shorting. They are going, they are going to throw it all together. But I'm telling you, it's a valuable material. And I don't believe, I really don't believe that they are doing it with a purpose. No, everything is valuable, but, for sure. Every material is valuable, for sure. Like, if everything, if everything comes from the earth, I think pretty much the earth doesn't care what we will do with it or not. Like, like come on. Uh, the Earth has been here, as you mentioned, like more than not. If we yeah. have been here 100,000 years, the Earth has been here like millions of who knows how, how long, right? So it's like uh, the Earth doesn't care what we do with it. With it stuff. Like, the Earth can take the, us. The best thing I can earth. recommend you, you, you just contact with the company and to find out the badest thing what you can do is just believe that I don't short things because I don't believe no, that they are no, going no, to no, short it up. It's just business. That's what it is. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. There's a lot of money in the world. Yeah, everyone noticed that you're leaving here now. It's about it's about business, that's all. It's about making money, making some jobs. Maybe you can have a coffee together. Yeah, um, I'm going to actually ask um, a slightly different uh, topic uh, because we are here, some of us who are preparing for the hackathon and it's still 10 days away. So there might be great ideas coming out from today as well, from the, from the topic you learned. And you emphasize the design thinking, right? And you brought in a little bit of like, to think about the end consumer or the real end. Could you give a bit of guidelines? Like, if I'm now searching into wild ideas, what to come to a hackathon with, then how to start thinking around this? Um, could you give me a more specific example? Do you mean about service design kind yeah, of in, in terms of uh, in, in terms of thinking around um, what could be the first step? Like, yes, design should be the key element there. Yes. Now. Now, how to, how to start brainstorming around 
uh, around where we could, you know, take the challenge on. Because you see the end as you brought out, right? Which is actually the beginning. Yes, but, but uh, my question is that, uh, do you mean about uh, how to increase the amount of sortings or, 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 can you give me the example? Yes? <laughs> example of an idea. <laughs> yes, what would you like to design? Yeah, no, it was a, it was a broader question. What should okay. be redesigned? Because you see the end, you yes. see what is coming in, right? So what you see is really valuable in thinking through to redesign. Wow. <laughs> but uh, we have the really fashion industry example here. Yeah. Actually, not fashion industry, but I think when it comes to stone and sorting and collection, I've lived 12 years in Denmark and US. I recently moved back and I am a little bit handicapped. And I think it's very confusing what to sort and what to put in. The communication is very, uh, um, first of all, it's not easy to find the sorting uh, uh, guidelines. And I think they are not very easy. So the design could be like easy, tangible communication to consumers how to sort in Estonia. Yeah. But I recently also learned that only up to 30% of the yellow bag gets recycled. I mean, not burned, but recycled into new materials. And the reason is that people mix too many things and there is a food waste and all sorts of things. So there is a lack of awareness and bad communication. Just an oh. idea for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the thing with uh, yellow bag, it's much more better. It's a uh, it's problem with uh, public containers, public packaging containers, yes. But the content is the but, same, but when you look yes, at the guidelines, I'm, it's yes. extremely confusing. People don't even answer what is a well, package. I can tell you about my dream, yes. My dream is that uh, if we go like into some kind of self-service portal, yes, then we can see our footprint. And we can see how we manage compared with others, how much resources we have uh, uh, saved, how much water, how much materials, and you just see a most beautiful visualized cakes or slices, yes, that uh, how you have man managed through the time, yes. But the challenge is how to track it. But I still don't know if egg folder is a package or is it a paper? <laughs> <laughs> That's the simple answer. You, you don't need to worry about that. So the good thing is she's really good sorcerer. Yes, if, you, if she has already such kind of uh, questions, yes. So. Don't bother your head with it. It's totally okay if you put on the package or you put it on the paper, we will short it out. Yes? The most important is that you short it. It's not about, about the question that do I put it in totally right, right uh, uh, container. Yeah? But it's one is paper and another plastic or Now we go a bit too deep, yes? But the good news, and, and I, I need to explain it, you asked about Estonia. And in Estonia, the thing is pretty good if we talk about the shorting and after shorting. Why it's that way? It's because our salaries are much, much lower than in Scandinavia, for example, yes? And in Estonia, we can afford us a lot of after shorting. The problem in Scandinavia is that the salaries are so high and it moves that way that technology is not at the moment as good that they can short out materials with the robots. And that salaries are so, or humans are so expensive that if the things are thrown together, for example, paper and, uh, and some packages, then uh, they don't have a point to short it out. 
And in a sense, even if you go to the Finland or, or Sweden, there's not just a package and paper containers. You will see the different paper containers. You will see the container for the carton, for the paper, and everything, and so on. Yes, for the different type of plastics as well. But I think the confusion is what is packaging, because in Denmark, there's materials. Aluminium, it's paper, it's glass, it's plastics. But here is what is packaging. Packaging can be all kinds of materials. Yeah, that's and, true. And that's, I think, what consumers actually don't know what to put in that. I'm telling you what's not packaged. Yeah? Or, or the bio waste are not packaged, yes? Medicines are not the package. Construction waste, it's not the package, yes? But it's totally okay if you put like the bottles and, and such kind of stuff together. We will make the after sure. Yeah. You didn't believe me, bro. There's a question in the back. Just last one, yeah? Uh, you say that you sort out around uh, 80 types of... Uh, 90, yeah? 90. And you sell some of them away? Yes. Right? Do you know what happens with these uh, materials or the waste for yes. yourself? What? Yes. What? <laughs> the reason uh, uh, why we are not selling uh, much uh, in China, for example, or uh, to Indonesia, uh, they have a huge, huge, uh, you know, industries. But the problem is that we don't have the overview of what they are doing with our materials. Yes. So th that's the reason why we are mainly selling our uh, materials in Europe, in Germany, for example, in France, in Scandinavia, and such kind of countries. Because at the same time, uh, Ministry of Environment is also wants to get the overview of how the things were recycled. Yes, they ask. Uh, it's called annex. Yes, it's a document which proves that how the things are recycled. And uh, the problem is with the, with the China partners are that they are not giving it. So you are not a circle, you are just part of the circle, right? We are just a part of uh, the circle, yes, tiny part of it. That, that's, that's the confusing thing that pretty often people think that circular economy is, you know, it's a waste management, yes? But we're talking about the economy, not the waste management uh, sector. We're talking about the economy. We are living at the moment in a linear economy. The next step, or, or where we are <coughs> stepping, is recycling economy. And the, uh, the next phase of it is circular economy. But I can give you some examples of it. Yep. So my question was, why is it that a man has got to talk for so much longer than any of the women? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just cutting him off. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much, Reina. Yeah. So let's give him an applause for being uh, the last.